The challenge with charts is gaining the ability to understand what you see on the chart and how that relates to what you see outside of your aircraft. So let's try to make sense of it all by breaking down the information you will see on a chart. First, let's start with contour lines, which are used to depict elevation on charts in mean sea level. The terrain intervals can vary from 100 to 250 to every 500 feet, and we can see that information given on this sectional chart. Here's an example on the sectional chart where the labeled lines are every 500 feet. To help depict the elevations a little more clearly, each chart uses color for elevation ranges. As we can see here, we see the lightest green goes from sea level to 1,000 feet MSL. The darker green covers a range from 1,000 to 2,000 feet MSL. And then the lighter tan color, I guess it's tan, that goes from 2,000 up to 2,440 feet MSL. Notice the chart also helps you locate the highest point using the longitude and latitude coordinates, and we can see that spot right here. The closer the contour lines are to each other, the more rapid the increase in elevation, as we can see in these two areas of this particular sectional chart. Compare those with the other lines you see in the lighter areas of the chart where they are more spread out, and therefore the terrain changes are more gradual. Obviously, more rapid increases in elevation make it easier to pick out locations the chart corresponds to as you look outside the cockpit, as we can see by comparing what we see in this chart and what we see outside. The black dots, known as spot elevations, show the high points along a ridge or range, and you will notice next to each black dot a number showing the elevation in feet MSL. Each chart is divided into rectangles known as quadrangles, which are the intersections between longitude and latitude lines. Within a quadrangle, you may see a larger black dot with a number next to it, such as this one showing a spot at 660 feet. This means this spot is the highest terrain within this quadrangle. Each quadrangle also has a maximum elevation number shown as a two-digit blue number which represents the highest obstacle for each quadrangle, whether it is man-made or natural, in hundreds of feet, but with some padding built in so that the obstacle is actually lower than the figure seen on the chart. So for example, the highest obstacle for this quadrangle is below 1,000 feet MSL. The highest obstacle for this quadrangle is below 1,300 feet MSL. When flight planning, for each quadrangle you fly over, you want to plan for 1,000 to 2,000 feet higher than the numbers you see, especially at night. So if I took off from this private airport and landed at Sackman, since the maximum elevation is 1,300 feet, you might consider flying at least 1,000 feet above or at 2,300 feet MSL but you also have to factor in landing at Sackman and the distance between the two airports in your planning, which will be discussed in future videos. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.